always start your business with your customer. Where do they see the value? Focus on that when it comes to products, services, and pricing. And then look internally and see how you can be more relevant to your customers, how you can provide them the best value, and be agile about it. Coffee's for closers only. So we've established my proposal to stand in principle. Now we're just haggling over price. Let's see how much we're going for an eBay. I mean, it's the same as Dunkin' Donuts. Cost 15 times the price. Today's podcast is sponsored by Jennings Executive Search. I had a great conversation with John Jennings about the skills needed in different pricing roles. He and I think a lot alike. If you're looking for a new pricing role, or if you're trying to hire just the right pricing person, I strongly suggest you reach out to Jennings Executive Search. They specialize in placing pricing people. Say that three times fast. Welcome to Impact Pricing, the podcast where we discuss pricing, value, and the mathematical relationship between them. I'm Mark Stiving. Today, our guest is Saima Khan, and here are three things you want to know about Saima before we start. She has two master's degrees, and one of them is from Harvard. Uh, she's earned her way to VP of pricing at a large telecom company and recently shifted into consulting for pricing. That'll be fun. And she's lived in some very exotic places, including Pakistan, Thailand, Malaysia, and even Canada. Welcome, Saima. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> hey, how'd you get into pricing? Yeah, that was just a pure accident. <laughs> I started with finance and accounting, and I thought it was boring. And I worked with marketing team on a pricing proposal, and I figured that I love it because pricing is such a good mix of finance, numbers, analysis, and at the same time, marketing insights like brand and customer perception. I immediately loved it. I felt like it was made for me. So I made the shift. Um, I started in pricing in 2006 and I stayed ever since. Wow. It's been and a happily ever after for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer was implied in what you just gave, but, but why do you stay in pricing? Um, I, I guess, like you mentioned, it is the mix of marketing, analysis, and numbers. I love numbers, and at the same time, I also like marketing strategies and working on product development. And when I'm working on pricing and looking at portfolio, it gives me a very good overview and hands-on experience in all the three areas that I like working with. Um, and I think pricing is very unique in that sense. Yeah, I love the sense that it it feels like it should be mathematical. And in a lot of cases it is, but it isn't just mathematical. Right? There's a ton of business and people skills and it's fascinating. It's a great field. Absolutely. I mean, when you're working with sales teams and product teams, there's a lot of negotiation going on. When you're working with the brand team, you're trying to align the pricing and brand message. And you, when you're working with finance team, you're looking at numbers and doing the business case. Uh, so there are so many skills involved here. And lately, I've started working with startups as well, which is uh, a lot more fascinating uh, for me. Yeah, let, we'll jump into that in just a second. I, I wanted to first ask you, what is, um, can you compare working for a big company in pricing, mm -hmm. and now you've jumped into consulting? What's mm -hmm. different? How is it, how is, how is your life different now? Uh, well, it's very, very different. I think that uh, when you're working for a big company, it's a progression, right? You set up a portfolio and then you look at it again and again. You see market dynamics and you're doing portfolio extensions a lot of the times. Um, when you are in consulting, it's like a short project each and every time. I like it. It's very exciting for me. It's new every time. It's a new company. It's a new challenge. Uh, I do miss the fact sometimes that we don't go as deep dive as we would in a big company. Because, for example, in a big company, once you set a pricing strategy, you work on the pricing portfolio, you also get to see the launch. You also get to evaluate the post effects of that. And you also get to adjust again. It's like a baby that you see grow. 
but you know with uh, with consulting it's like you make the baby but then you <laughs> give it for adoption yes <laughs> yeah. so that's a pretty fascinating way to look at it um i've heard the implementation piece is a really big deal um so when you're working for a company being able to do implementation are the are the company sizes different so you worked with a really large telecom company yeah right and and so now do you work mostly with large companies or medium small to medium sized companies mostly large companies i am also working with, with the medium and small companies so the consulting firm strategic pricing uh, management group that i'm working with we are mostly working with bigger companies sometimes medium sized as well but uh, in my startup space i am obviously working with very small companies as well yeah and i personally Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say I personally find working with small companies with entrepreneurs so much more fun, but they don't have the money to pay us as much. So it's it's yeah. kind of we have to really like it if we're going to do it. Um. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Uh it is one of the challenge and that is why there are very few pricing consultants who focus on startups because startups primarily they don't have the budget. or they don't understand how important pricing is for them a lot of time pricing is just like a back thought it's not at the front um for me the way i work with startups is generally through entrepreneurship centers and these entrepreneurship centers are funded either through government or they are their own private entities or i work with them through other organizations uh like um like tai if you've heard of it it's a silicon valley organization so there are other organizations working with and help startups i work with them and they connect me with startups and that's how um i do it primarily nice so tell me about uh pricing for a startup i i i think this sounds like a more fun topic than pricing for big companies why is pricing for startups interesting for you what what do you do Um so I think the most interesting part of startup pricing for me is uh, and I say this again and again is the link to the business model because for a startup it's very important to see how the startup is going to charge money for what and from who and it applies to mostly all the startups but a lot more to software products so think of like a recent app like Bumble right so bumble is a relatively new app it's a dating app um what do they charge for who is their primary customer at the moment the primary customer is the end user and bumble is charging for in app purchases and also for premium features so it's the end user that's being charged but bumble is also making money from advertising but advertising is the small portion of their revenues right now which means that advertisers are a smaller segment for them it's not the primary customer segment but if you look at a bigger app like linkedin they have talent solutions they have marketing solutions uh they have premium subscriptions and they have learning solutions a lot of their revenue right now is coming from marketing solutions and talent solutions and not just premium subscriptions So it's a time for Bumble to see that you know going forward when they have decided that they're going to make most money from end user do they want them to be the primary user or are they going to expand to other customer segments as well and it's important for startups because they're still exploring who they are generating the most value for and that should be their primary segment if Bumble is generating most of value uh in fact economic benefit or a value which can be monetized for advertisers it might want to shift you know its focus from primarily end users to the marketing agencies so that's very interesting with the startups you know when i work with them i don't start with pricing i start with business model and identifying which customer group is actually deriving most benefit uh from your existing product and services and how you can work or adjust your products and services portfolio to create more value for that group of customers who you can monetize the most so i dearly love that answer that you just gave how do you 
how do you pitch companies? Because if you walk in and say, I'm a pricing expert, and then we walk in the door and we don't do pricing, what we really do is business model definition. How do you pitch that to them? I don't pitch business model alone. I pitch business model and pricing strategy together. But then I start with business model and I end with the pricing strategy. So it's both together because you're right. I mean, if it's just business model, uh, as a pricing consultant, you don't add so much value. But the people that I work with, they do appreciate when we identify the business model and then we give them the right pricing strategy for their business um, in terms of strategy, like, you know, what should it be? Um, or what kind of value can it extract? Should it be a premium strategy? Should it be fair value, good value? What kind of pricing strategy applies to your particular target segment? And what kind of pricing is good for your business? You know, is it subscription pricing? Is it premium? Is it pilot? Very important also for startups is the stage of the business they're at, you know? Uh, and who are, what's the nature of their customers? Is it like going to be the innovators, early adopters, early majority? Because that will also define what kind of a pricing model is best for them. Uh, sometimes if it's like innovators or early adopters, it's a very new type of product. Uh, once we have identified the business model, then we would say that, okay, we need to go based on some research we need to go with a very simple business model. We don't want to make it very complex. Let's just do a simpler MVP. Let's do a simple price structure. Let's go try it out. Maybe do a premium, do a pilot, and then explore from primary market to decent markets, primary customer to secondary customers, and from a very simple pricing structure, maybe to subscription tiers or a more complicated uh, business yep. model which the customers can digest. Yeah. So let me jump back to the business model for a second, because one of the things I love about this concept of helping people find business models, and, and by the way, I, th I think what I'm about to say is true in a lot of different areas in a company, but mm -hmm. especially in business models, and that is value should be driving your business model decision, right? Who gets the most value right. from your product? How much value do they get from your product? And yet most companies, most people, big company, small company, I don't really care, think about or understand what does value really mean to them in the marketplace and the customer's minds. And we as pricing people, we start out saying, well, I have to understand value if I'm gonna put a price on it. Mm -hmm. And we might be the only people in a company that truly understand value. Yeah. And then, then it's a matter of, well, how do I get other people in the company to make smarter business to, uh, model decisions or, or smarter product development decisions or smarter marketing right. decisions? Or, um, and, and so I find that fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. It requires a bit of a training from my end as well, because when you're working with startups, you are educating them on the pricing concepts. And like you mentioned, a lot of time explaining value and uh, since I have worked more with startups who are in B2B space, I talk a lot about proven outcomes and the differential advantage that they have over their competitors. And I also teach them because, you know, how startups are growth oriented and they just want to grab the sales and tend to underprice the product. So there's always a training and discussion on, uh, you know, it's great to be growth oriented um, and you cannot monetize a product which has not been tried in the market. But the best way to do it is through a freemium model or a pilot model instead of underpricing because taking the price up is very hard, you know, because you establish the value of that product already and it might be lower than what the customer perceived initially. Um, so it's a lot of back and forth and, you know, a lot of education and training when you're working with startups, but it's worth it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot more fun because they listen to us. Yeah. Um, they, they know that there's a lot to learn that they don't know. They don't, they don't think they know everything going in. So Absolutely. I think that's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what do you think the biggest problem is that entrepreneurs face or startups face in this world of pricing? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the biggest challenge is the one that they don't know, <laughs> which is that 
pricing is normally an afterthought for a lot of businesses. And I have not seen many, but I have seen a few examples where like uh, I just mentioned that some startups, because they want to sell, they want to bring customers on board, they underprice the product, uh, hoping that the cost would go down. And of course, uh, not all entrepreneurs have done very good business projections. When they launch the product costs, they don't come down and they think that the operations are inefficient, which is why they're incurring losses and they have to shut down the business. Well, in fact, it was suboptimal pricing, which led to lower revenues. And that is why it didn't work out. So I guess um, we need to uh, probably educate startups a little bit more on the element of pricing and the value that bring, because it's natural that whenever you bring something very new to the market, you're a little bit underconfident and you, it's, it's natural to you know, try to underprice your products and services. Um, so that's the challenge. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to disagree with you for just a second. Right? Sure. So, so I'm not so sure that it matters if I go to market and I, and I go to market with too low of a price. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and I think of it in the following sense. Um, if you're Apple and you announce a new iPhone and you underpriced it, it is really hard to raise the price because everybody in the world knows the price of that Apple, of that iPhone. Right. Right. If if you're a new startup and you come out at you know ten dollars a month, or it should have been fifty dollars a month, you go in a bunch of customers and they tell you, "Oh my God, this is the best thing ever! I love this!" And then you mm-hmm. raise the prices to fifty dollars for new customers that come in. Mm-hmm. They never even knew you were pricing at ten dollars, mm-hmm. right? So it's totally okay. It, it yeah, I raise the prices on those current customers, but I don't, yeah. I'm not so worried about those. Mm-hmm. I, I tend to agree and disagree with you. I Good. agree with you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are customers where it really uh, doesn't matter, especially if you're launching on small scale and you only have beta customers, right? You launch something very cheap for them. They are like for a big firm, they are what you would call your research respondents. So these are your pilot users. You ask them for your input, you improve the product. Because normally um, at this stage that you're talking about, the product is also not final. It's normally either an MVP or initial version of the product, which is going to be refined. So at that stage, I think it's okay. You can price it anything. It can be freemium or it can be a lower price product. Um, uh, But as you expand um, and you start having revenues, and you start becoming profitable, that's when it's more important to have um, a price benchmark. There are certain businesses where, you know, a supplier might come to you initially just because you were low cost. You know, so I have seen in some technical products, there was um, there was an AI-based infra- infrastructure. In, yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting the name, but, but I work with an AI product which was being used for diagnostics and uh, um, they were going to a supplier who was using another similar product, but this one was cheaper. So they went with this supplier because of price. And you can imagine what happens later when they raise the price. You know, the focus, instead of focusing on the value that you're bringing to the client, focusing on the features that you were developing down the roadmap, you're now focusing on price and beginning with you know, a price competition and that's how you enter the market. Um, and it's not bad. I mean, a lot of startups do that. They bring a better alternative, which is cheaper, but your costs have to be low. And this, I, in, in my opinion, it's not a good proposition to start a big business with. It can be one of the differentiators, but not the primary product that, you know, just because my price is low. I'm going to bring this. Uh, yeah. So, so I definitely agree. I am not a fan of using price as a competitive lever, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think we ought to be selling value. We ought to have products that are better than our competitors or do things that are better. Um, we, ought to, we ought to be building things that don't have competition, right? We're solving problems that haven't been solved in the marketplace yet. So I, I think all of that is right. Um, so my, my only concern is that that 
pricing when you first launch a product isn't as important as as we start to gain traction, now it starts to become more important because now it matters. Are we going to be profitable, not profitable? Um, so. Um, yeah, I, I agree to do this. And I think in the end, it comes down to do future customers know what price we charged before? And if the answer to that's no, then it really doesn't matter so much. So. Yeah, it really doesn't matter so much. Also your relationship with the customer, if you started off with a bigger client and you're charging them something, you want to keep the relationship more in B2B context. And then if you go out in the market and um, change the price, if, it's, if you lower the price, it's a problem for your first customer who you were maybe charging high. Uh, because it's also important, like, right. you know, yes, you can change the price, but you don't want to, as a startup, they do this sometimes, but you should not make too many changes. It creates lack of trust in the market. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. Um, so how do you help entrepreneurs figure out the value of their products? I normally teach them. And I teach them simpler research tools because for big companies, it's very easy. We have a market research agency at the back end and you know, we are working with them and we are doing this expensive research across markets and helping them develop value-based propositions. For startups, they don't have that kind of money. So I teach them about tools which they can use on their own. And thankfully today, we have a lot of DIY tools uh, which the entrepreneurs can use themselves. And that includes sophisticated tools like Conjoint because we have a lot of web tools now. Anybody can search Conjoint research tools on web and they can find it. Uh, so I teach the entrepreneurs how to find it and how to use it. Uh, it's not that complicated. Then I also preach uh, A-B testing. Depending on the product, it works more in consumer market, uh, but it's possible. I just ask them to be careful with the local regulations because you don't want to be pushing two price points in market for the same product at the same time. But if you do it one week after another or with a small gap um, or with slightly different product features, you can test different bundles in the market and different pricing in the market to see what works and what does not work. And then I think freemium is also a very good tool. It's primarily used to attraction in the market, but I think it can also be used um, as a tool to understand pricing, especially in B2B space. For example, you have an enterprise software. You want to sell it to a B2B customer. You can give them a trial, a freemium, in which the customer and you can decide on which features they want to use and then close the pricing. You know, There could be negotiations and budget discussions during that period, and then you end up figuring out what the right price would be for that product based on the value you're delivering to that client. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because companies don't understand the value they deliver. Even though they build products all excited, saying everybody's gonna want this, everybody's gonna love this and use it, but, but they didn't really understand. And yeah. The other side of that is customers don't really understand the value they're going to get from our products. Hmm. And, and so it, it takes some type of coordinated effort between the two of us to truly learn what that value looks like. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, it, so the, the trial makes a lot of sense in that respect. Hmm. So, nice. Saima, we are running out of time, but final question for you. Sure. What's one piece of pricing advice you would give our listeners that you think could have a big impact on their business? Uh, well, I think if it's just one word, it would be look for value and something that we always preach that go for um, outside in approach, not inside out. So always start your business with your customer. Where do they see the value? Focus on that when it comes to products, services and pricing, and then look internally and see how you can be uh, more relevant to your customers, how you can provide them the best value and be agile about it. I think in today's world, it's very, very competitive, both in terms of product solutions and pricing. Being agile is the key to success. Nice, making small, quick changes, learning what works. Absolutely. Nice. Saima, thank you so much for your time today. If anybody wants to contact you, how can they do that? You can find me on LinkedIn uh, with my name, 
S A I M A P H A N, and you can get in touch with me through LinkedIn. Okay, and obviously that'll be in the show notes as well. Episode number one twenty nine, all done. Nice. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, would you please give us a rating and a review? And if you have any questions or comments about this podcast or pricing in general, feel free to email me, mark at impactpricing.com. Now, go make an impact. Thanks again to Jennings Executive Search for sponsoring our podcast. If you're looking to hire someone in pricing, I suggest you contact someone who knows pricing people. Contact Jennings Executive Search.